Okay, it has been a while since there has been any kind of unboxing activity here on Facebook or on YouTube or really nowhere else that I hang out. I have been slowly receiving uh, material, but not a lot of it has been role-playing game directly related material. Things like Battletech and Star Wars Armada have been coming my way. And of course, those things feed directly into my role-playing game activities. But anyway, this box, this you know, unusually shaped box is from a Kickstarter that I backed, uh, that I backed uh, a couple of months ago by a company that's now called Two Little Mice. And the product line, the game itself, is called Broken Compass. And it's a game of pulp adventure and exploration. And, you know, it's, that appeals. And uh, they promised a lot of great art and a lot of passion for their product and a lot of interesting options uh, along the lines. And uh, so... I'm receiving mine probably among the last people on Earth uh, to get there. Something happened between the beginning of fulfillment and the end of fulfillment, and my order kind of got lost by the wayside, but I followed their instructions. You know, if you don't get a tracking number and if the package doesn't arrive by this date, let us know. So I didn't get a tracking number. I didn't receive the package by that date, so I let them know. and. Got an instant response, and then the next day got a tracking number, and then a few days later, the package has arrived. Two Little Mice uh, are currently running a Kickstarter. It hasn't launched yet, but it's in the, the preview stage for an expansion to what I'm going to unbox here. So, this is your first look maybe and my first look at the physical rewards for Broken Compass. Okay, so it's a very, very good box. More tape on the inside. Now this was shipped to me from Italy and it came pretty quickly. I wasn't actually expecting it until next week. That was the delivery estimate. But, uh, um, yay <laughs> for earlier arrival. So we have foam peanuts. It's been ages since I've received anything with foam peanuts. All right. Now there's a, a bunch of stuff that we're going to be looking at. Uh, so we, first we have this on top, which has, you know, postcards and the character sheets are done as passports. So you have passports for rivals and you have passports for the, you know, the, the main characters. That's kind of cool. So uh, we have the dice bag. This is the Broken Compass logo. This is a nice canvas bag with a heavy drawstring. Nicely knotted, artistically knotted. I'll, I hate, I hesitate to undo it because I won't be able to to replicate it when I tie it myself. But uh, pretty tight closure, and inside we have dice like this: right? north, south, east, west, and you know, that looks charming. Right? So they're in yellow and in black. as well as so, you know, your, your doubloon. <laughs> so we'll talk about that stuff a little later on. So I mentioned passports, right? Wasn't joking, you're seeing it reversed, uh, but when this video is prepared for YouTube, it will be the right way around. And, uh, The 
Adventurer passport, the rival passport. And it has, you know, character sheet type information inside. Pretty slick. And postcards. So here's one greetings from New York. And on the back, there is a description to get you excited about New York as a setting. And the way that the the way that the game itself has been set up is to think about it as a serial or as a season of television or as a, a movie series like the Indiana Jones series, that kind of thing. And that the Broken Compass system will be used to support different types of settings. So this initial setting looks at 1930s style, Indiana Jones style heroic pulp, but it also looks at 90s style action movies. In development are settings or seasons for pirates and for the age of exploration and, and this sort of stuff. So they have lots of plans and they're they're very enthusiastic about it, and they're making pretty attractive products. I was tempted, because of shelf space and good lord and stuff, to, you know, this time I'll go the only PDF route. You know, I, that, was my, that was my plan, but, uh, so that's everything in the box. But I failed to carry out that plan because what they had prepared was novel and interesting, but also looked really good. Hey, there's a pencil. How cool is that? So in here are three books and what I believe is the Game Master screen, but let's take a look. It's all fully wrapped up in, in bubble wrap. Pretty good tape, so let's let's not waste your time and mine. <laughs> All right. Okay. Is there more tape? There it is. And all right. <laughs> Very cool. Oh. It has a holder for the pencil. It has an elastic to keep it closed. And it's not leather, but it has a leathery feel. And it's really heavy. That's kind of cool. That's just, that's just fun. <laughs> it has heavy, heavy pages with rounded corners naturally rounded corners inside. Full color interiors. It has a color coded spine. I don't think it is going to come out clearly, but anyway, you can see that there's at least a differential of, of color there, but to the naked eye, uh, there are visible color sections. There are, this one's kind of funny. There are interior full color plates for the different chapters, and uh, yeah, very very slick. Pretty potent smell. <laughs> right. So we've got some example characters in the back. And just really nicely done. The very first thing, not the very first thing you see. But, you know, the first big piece of art and one that was used to launch the Kickstarter is uh, this kind of dynamic situation. And, uh, you know, they talk about, you know, expectations. You know, they talk about developing your visual language and, uh, you know, just your, 
your appreciation of and your connection to uh, the setting as you go. And uh, it's a game that uses D6s, pools of D6s, relatively small, from two to nine, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, dice might be available, and it's counting successes. But in this game, success is determined not by adding the dice together or by meeting or beating a target number or rolling under a target number. It's done by rolling pairs. So if you get, and it doesn't matter what, what the pairs are, like two ones or, or two sixes, that's the same as the fact that you rolled two uh, matching dice. And the more matching dice you have, the better the success. And then you get into some interesting stuff, such as, let's say you roll four of a kind. Do you want to have two basic successes or, you know, one really amazing success? That kind of thing. So there's lots of flexibility in this matching dynamic, especially the, the larger the pool that you have. So, and they do, you know, for those of you who are uh, math inclined or math averse, they include a chart of the probabilities of, of getting the different levels of success across different numbers of dice. But, so it, it looks, it's, it's strongly reminiscent of an adventurer's journal with all the real, realia you could hope for. You know, so that's worth, <laughs> this thing is worth the price of admission right here. And uh, when I put this on YouTube, I'll, I'll include looks inside the, the PDF so you can get a, a better uh, view than just some guy holding it up uh, partially open. This is the screen. It's a little, well, it basically it's the same size as the, as the book. Right? It has a map. And uh, oh, it's just this tiny little action and adventure screen, the fortune screen. And that's what the game master is called in this game is the fortune master, but it's built to be highly collaborative. Meaning the game master has a specific role, which is preparing to describe the locations and preparing the challenges that will be found there and preparing the rivals that may be competing uh, with you, but the goal of the adventure, such as, you know, seeking the treasure of the Sierra Madre or, or uh, the golden idol of, of this, that, or the other place, um, that's determined collaboratively. And if there is some kind of rival, that's determined collaboratively. And where this is going to take place, like, you know, in South America or in the Arctic or whatever is determined collaboratively. And then the specifics are put in the hands of the fortune master. So that's kind of interesting. And, uh, okay. Should I open the screen? I guess I'll open the screen. Oh, it's sealed up really tightly. I'll show the screen in its PDF version. All right, so I'm going to skip over this one for a moment. Uh, I mentioned that things are done in seasons uh, of types of, of adventure, right? So this is season one, the golden age. And this is full of different types of pulp heroic campaign. That might be as long or as short as you're interested in. And it gives you guidelines for what such a campaign would entail, right? If it were a real serial or whatnot. So it's, it's kind of like a pulp adventure handbook for people who have heard about pulp, you know, and heroic pulp and, and the different types of, of media that, you know, worked in that genre, but don't have a grounding in it themselves. This is a, a handy guide for getting going. It's also a focusing tool for people who do have a grounding and want to be able to give a, a clean and, and focused experience. That's kind of cool. This is also in shrink wrap. And then this is one of the, the stretch goals. Uh, this is 
Locktales. So to take a very, very quick run through here uh, to avoid uh, spoilers and the like, Locktales is both a, a set of adventures, of additional scenarios, as I mentioned, but it's also a series of articles giving advice about how to get the best out of a game like this if you're new to it. So stepping inside, we see who our contributors are, and then take a look at the contents. And the contents are just listed sections one through six, and then section seven are the different scenarios. But this was put together as stretch goals. And what it tries to do is communicate the underlying philosophy of the game, right? So communicating how failing forward relates to Broken Compass and dealing with how to present riddles and traps in a way that is engaging, how to handle journeys and the like. So it's a, a good mix of supplement for the Fortune Master and for the players to get into the spirit of the game and to be able to do effective self-assessment about how the game is going. And it also supplies you with scenarios so that you can put those ideas into practice. So, excellent, I think. So, on the back of this one, it says, Fortune favors the brave. On the back of this, Fortune and Glory, kid. Fortune and glory. That should get a smile from some of the people who are watching. And on the back of the core rules, I'm a man of fortune and I must seek my fortune. All right. There's an ad for the Kickstarter. In 2021, in May, we'll have Broken Compass Season 2, Jolly Roger, the pirate season. And in season three, Voyage Extraordinaire, right? Live classic adventures inspired by the greatest works of Jules Verne. So that is coming to Kickstarter in May. It's just a, a short time away. What else is in here? We have... Oh, right on. Not a poster, but a movie poster, right? Broken Compass. The World Tree. Seriously. And this is another movie poster. Let's take a look at that. Broken Compass. The City of Life. <laughs> All right. So here endeth the unboxing part of the unboxing. Looking inside Broken Compass is a delight. You can see, looking at this close-in, clearer view of the cover, how they've done everything conceivable to make it seem exactly like a real leather book. And it's almost startling when your fingers touch it and you realize that there aren't raised leather stitched pack, uh, patches on its on its cover but still your fingers can lie to you it's very very pleasant so it opens up with advice that these aren't exactly rules they're more than guidelines this is not the best advice in the world but it's nice to get someone's permission i guess that you can change things if you need to so here we have the responsible parties and a note about cultural references. Then we see how it's broken down, how the 240 pages are broken down into different sections. So we introduce the game in section one, introduce character in section two, introduce the rules in section three, introduce hazards and getting out of hazards in section four. Section five is talking about planning and getting ready as the fortune master and section six and section uh, the pilot section uh, continue that kind of, of uh, informative and preparatory instruction here is our first dramatic image which I showed earlier and then we get into these short sections of text which 
are very direct, very informative, and have a real sense of enjoyment about them. It's simply fun to read. Plus, every effort is made to call out very specific terms so that you recognize when you're looking at game terms and when you're not. So as far as layout goes, as far as communication of the information goes, and as far as the quality of translation goes, this game is among the best out there. Right. How to play. Playing together. These are the concepts I talked about before. We talk about collaboration and then how that collaboration can work so that the full knowledge of the group, the full experience of the group, the way that the group sees the genre that's being evoked can all work together to give everybody a great experience, but in play, understanding what everybody's role is. It's very cool. All right, so this is what you could expect if you pick up the rule book. To talk about the system a little bit, let's jump into chapter three. And challenges have difficulties. So we have a basic, critical, extreme, or impossible, which we talked about in passing earlier. And if you look at the image on this page, you'll see the dice arrayed. And we're looking at pairs, or three of a kind, or four of a kind, or five of a kind. And of course, with a nine die pool, if you manage to get the maximum number of dice on a particular challenge, you might end up with pairs and three of a kind or some other combination along those lines and then get to decide what to do with it. To keep things very simple, the difficulty levels and the types of success that you earn and the type of dangers that you face all use the same terminology, basic, critical, extreme, and impossible. And one of the things that I quite like about this is how that you can easily fold these terms into natural conversation. And so the line between purely game speak and in character speak can be blurred as much as possible, which can help you play more cooperatively with a lot more people at your table. To extend this, there are advantages and disadvantages, and they might be drawn from things such as your character's mood, or certain situations, or clever ideas that you've brought to the fore, and advantages and disadvantages add or subtract dice. So that's pretty easy. There, as I mentioned, are uh, indications of what the odds are, but you don't have to look at them if you don't want to know. <laughs> then, let's jump ahead to the difficulties. There we go. Traps and bullets. So here we see the same kind of iconography, and I'll show you this stuff again when we get to the Game Master screen. But we can see how the difficulty of a danger will be presented in the exact same way. Basic, critical, extreme, or impossible. And what might happen, right? What are the stakes? And what skill is relevant in that particular moment? And what are the dice going to do about it? And uh, how much harm are we going to take? <laughs> how much is it going to hurt? And what is the role of luck? So if you remember, I showed a coin before. You get a lucky coin. And you flip it. And if it comes up heads or tails, it will either stay with you or it will move on to the game master. But what it can do is get you out of trouble that you no longer have any way to get out of. So you might be able to retain that get out of certain death free card or you might only be able to use it once. So that's a, a fun little tweak on uh, characters of this type. But that's not all that luck coins are good for. You see here the many uses of luck coins. You can save yourself from certain death as I just talked about. You can achieve an extreme success rather than rolling the dice. You can remove or avoid one of the things that's providing you with disadvantage. 
you can choose to keep hold of an item that you would have otherwise have lost. And the very first thing that came to my mind when I read that in the rules was Indy's hat. You can save a vehicle from destruction. And here I find myself thinking about... <laughs> think, I think of uh, Malcolm Reynolds and Serenity. Hmm. And last but not least, get a clue that uh, you haven't found or haven't been able to figure out. So that's all right, I think. All right, to round out our look inside of things in a glare-free environment, this is the interior of the Fortune screen. So it has the same small format as the rest of the products, and so it folds out into four panels, each of which is here. It's a very effective presentation of the information, both from the point of view of, I've never played this game before, what am I going to need to know that's important? And then, from the perspective of, I haven't played the game for a while, what do I need to remember? And from a, I'm pretty adept with the game, but it's nice to have the procedures in front of me point of view. So I don't find that there's things here which are not important. So if we go through from left to right, we have all of the tools that we're going to be regularly using, such as what the good uh, and bad feelings are and what they do, what advantages and disadvantages are and what they do, what, how to determine success, what the different successes are, how to uh, determine danger, how to handle luck. So all of those things you might forget in the moment, all of those things you might have to quickly explain to someone, uh, which might not go as well from memory. So as far as making an effective screen goes, this is pretty excellent. So this winds up this unboxing and look inside and look at the rewards from the original Broken Compass Kickstarter. I have been quite impressed by the quality of the goods, especially impressed by the quality of the translation, and continually impressed by the ongoing cheer and enthusiasm for the project that its creators have. The whole thing just is fun. Seems like fun. It's fun to read. Looks like it'll be a lot of fun to play. If you're curious about it, check it out. Two Little Mice and Broken Compass.